Okay, the IELTS part two speaking exam involves speaking at length about a topic. This topic is one that you do not know about before you start the exam and that you only have a minute to prepare for. This is a technique that I suggest for answering that question. This technique is that you pre-prepare a few key stories that you are going to adapt for every type of question you're given. Following is some examples of how I can answer basically every question that I could possibly be given using examples of cycling trips I've taken. Sometimes I lie a little bit about the details. Um, sometimes I have to bend it a little bit for make it fit. But the great advantage of this technique is that you can prepare quite a lot of your speaking beforehand. So I'm going to try to bend in words like avid. So I look like my English is really great because I can I can add a bit to my vocabulary and I'm going to add kind of uh, rehearsed and down pat parts of my story, which are going to really add to the perception of my fluency because they're going to be really easy because I already know exactly what I'm going to say. OK, let's see if I can answer every question given using the same story structure. My next question is describe a piece of advice that you recently received. And again, it's quite a difficult question for me to answer because I, I can't really think of any advice I've almost ever received. No, no matter recently received. I mean, do people really often get advice that is memorable? Okay, so instead of thinking about that, I'm going to think about one of my three stories. One, well, a Georgia story is not useful. It wasn't very recent. Uh, cycling around Taiwan, uh, stories with my father, not very recent either. So I'm going to think about cycling around Taiwan. I'm going to tell the same kind of story about cycling around Taiwan on my bicycle. And I'm going to make up a little bit of advice uh, that I could have received about cycling my bike. OK, so uh, a piece of advice that I've received is to wear cycling gloves. Now, I cycle around Taiwan an awful lot. I don't know if you know much about Taiwan, but it's a very humid, sticky, hot kind of country. And people in Taiwan, they, they really like buying the most modern kind of equipment possible. So when you go, sometimes I'll cycle a hundred kilometers in a day and I'll see somebody cycling five kilometers down the road and they'll have like their cycling gloves and their helmet and their Lycra shirt on and their padded Lycra pants and they have clips onto their wheels. And so it is this really excessive equipment and I really don't like doing that. I generally cycle in my t-shirt or in my shorts, so uh, I'm not really that interested in buying this stuff. It seems kind of unnecessary to me. But a friend of mine called Tom, quite recently he suggested that I wear cycling gloves. And, you know, you can imagine that I wasn't too keen on the idea of cycling gloves because, frankly, I find it a, a, a little bit silly to have all this uh, superfluous equipment that you could be wearing. But, you know, Tom, he's quite an avid cyclist as well, so I thought perhaps I'd give it a shot. And so I, I bought a pair of giant cycling gloves, giant Taiwanese company. I quite like them. They're very trustworthy. And I put them on and I went for my cycle ride. And I find that when you put the gloves on, they allow you to grip onto the handlebars much better than if your hands are quite slimy, sticky because of the sweat. And it actually makes cycling massively easier. Because you're no longer kind of are your hands always slipping off the handlebars. And I notice that when I'm not wearing the gloves, I'm constantly having to wipe the sweat off my hands. Perhaps this is a little bit of a disgusting uh, anecdote to bring up. But I find it's massively useful in a really humid country to be able to grip the handlebars. And a little bit dangerous if you don't. <laughs> The 
next question is to describe the time of day that I like. Mm, I mean, I suppose I could try to do cultural trips with my dad. Mm, not that useful for it. Georgia, again, seems a little bit too far in the past. So cycling seems to be the one I'll pick. It seems to follow logically as well. There's, there's generally a time of day that I like with cycling. Oh, OK, so I'm just going to go into my introduction. So, OK, uh, the time of day that I'm going to talk to you about is really early in the morning. So I live in Taiwan. It's, it's a, a really humid, hot country and it's very sticky. It's sticky, humid and hot. And I'm a, an avid cyclist. So I really enjoy going for quite long cycle rides uh, by myself. And one of the greatest times to do that is a little bit before daybreak. So because Taiwan is so hot, cycling in the daytime, it's ruthless. It's like being baked and broiled alive all in one. And it can be a pretty horrifying experience. So, but if you set off at perhaps three o'clock in the morning, then it's a little bit cool and really quiet. So by yourself, you can Cycle your bike down the quiet and relatively cool streets of Taiwan. Very little traffic and an awful lot of peace. So as you cycle, for example, recently I cycled to Kending, which is about a hundred mile cycle ride. You're cycling along in this nice quiet night time. And sometimes you'll meet some sights that you, you never really expect to meet in the day. For example, we once met a, a temple who had some goat which they'd cut open and they were all standing around with hoods. Never really did find out what that was about. Okay. a journey that didn't go as planned and actually I'm going to use the same story as my useful website story and all I'm going to do is change one detail of it uh, in order to make it more appropriate. So uh, anyway uh, a journey that didn't go as planned. So I live in Taiwan uh, I've lived there for many years now and Taiwan it's quite a hot sticky humid country and I'm an avid cyclist, so I like to go around and I go cycling there. And there's a, a cycle trip that I like to do quite often, which is between Tainan and Jai. It's about um, maybe 80 kilometres, depending on what route you go. And I follow the map from Google Maps to show me how to go there. It's a relatively straightforward journey, just go down straight along a road. But Google Maps, it has this tendency to take you down tiny little roads. So for example, it will take you on this tiny road, which is just barely the width of your bicycle with two fish farms at either side. And so you're in the middle of this agricultural area and suddenly you'll find that the road is getting smaller and smaller. And that's generally not a problem in many countries, but because Taiwan is so hot, as it gets smaller and smaller and then suddenly disappears, you're often left in the middle of nowhere and with the blazing sun hitting down on you. Several times, in fact, on, on one particular journey, I found myself really running low on water and Google Maps kept promising me that there definitely was a road just around the corner. And yet, despite this fact, every time I took the directions from Google, I ended up in some ditch somewhere or in some farm. And it got really quite desperate for a while. Ooh. 